What can trade the NBA.com? This is John's report. It's for the 2nd of July. Well, we approached the ABM Yellow, and uh, they were able to just keep things pretty neutral as more positive uh, elements came out that things are really looking ugly, and from the market viewpoint, poor economy uh, is a good thing because they have to justify what they've been saying all along, which is that rates are going back to zero. Hasn't happened yet, and you can still see the continued deterioration of MBI readings, rising short levels. Still a decent enough uh, reset from uh, DOC Steel, which means that wouldn't take much for uh, short-term buyers to push things up. And of course, new fund money is about to arrive just in time for the holiday, so you've got a little bit of a shortened week. Maybe enough to keep things uh, from imploding, but. At the end of the day, if there's weakness, it's going to be exacerbated, and that's just uh, the reality of what we're seeing from these readings uh, from an MQ standpoint. Likewise, a little bit stronger than uh, what we see from the S&P uh, as far as uh, relative strength goes. You still have uh, DOC uh, green here over cyan. Cyan is still under red, so still within the buy category from a NASDAQ standpoint, and that's enough to keep things from falling apart. The laughing trade of the day, uh, <laughs> treasuries, yeah, uh, you know, anyone who thought that it was a good idea to be in them at that point, I mean, can you imagine how much has been lost monetarily from the guys who bought here just a week and a half ago versus today? It's just a staggering sum, and it's just a further indication of what we see about the prop up of banks and that. Uh, it's just not really a credible situation at this particular point. And it's only getting worse because oil, look at that continuation of the run, and we know what that means. CPI numbers coming next uh, quarter are going to be elevated again. So while they were all talking about inflation being under control, which never was, because all they were talking about was the rate of inflation was slowing down. It wasn't that the inflation was stopping. It was just that it was slowing down. Now it's going to accelerate again. Okay. What does that mean? Well, yeah. More of the same. From a Euro standpoint, they're very excited in the Eurozone uh, with the uh, switch from major socialism push to uh, conservative uh, sovereignty uh, taking the forefront. Uh, Macron being trounced and most uh, socialists throughout the uh, EU were pulverized. Um, under the current situation, I guess some people are just not happy with the idea of the war in Ukraine for no benefit to the EU, and so they're throwing out most of them, and uh, you can already see the uh, party axis is forming that are going to try and bring back uh, individual state sovereignty. What a novel idea. Um, <laughs> much like uh, what we see in the battle with, uh, you know, in the U.S. states' rights versus the federal government, and it's been lopsided towards the EU uh, controlling everything, and if you didn't vote the way they wanted, they punished your individual state, or in this case, country. Uh, we saw that with Greece, uh, Hungary, uh, various others, but now, of course, Orban, uh, he leads the EU. Uh, will that benefit the euro overall? Um, potentially, no, because at the end of the day, um, the socialists that kind of still run things are not going to be happy with that, and they're going to cause a lot of uh, difficulties. So I would expect a rough ride for the year, particularly as oil rises. Uh, it's already artificially way higher than it should be. And they all recognize that growth in the EU is pretty much destroyed with some of these global climate uh, regulations that are just not practical in any way, shape, or form. Um, that will lead to gold starting to make its move. It's way behind where oil is. Uh, I think some are just waiting to see if there's any takeoff. Uh, no reason to really wait. I mean, they're just building the case for what we already know is going to happen. When we look at it from a crypto standpoint, they're making a little bit of a move, nothing uh, too exciting. Uh, I think in this case, ETH probably will outperform Bitcoin as you have that Mt. Gox situation with supply. Not really uh, all that big a deal because when the selling does begin, uh, that's where uh, most of the money will have to go to, but there will be some that will have to take their money out of it simply because they'll need the cash. From a 50K standpoint, you can see that we've been in the decline. We hit the zeros. We've bounced off of it, but 
MBI white rose again, so we would expect to move back towards that 55. Pretty clean, pretty straightforward. That's uh, and if it's delayed, the reality is even if you get a pop back up, it's just a secondary item that's going to likely lead to a similar outcome, and you're still going to get the fade. It's just a question of uh, it may take a little bit longer, but it's still going to happen. When we look at it from an intraday standpoint, again, like we talked about, option situation, too many people moving in to the put side, so they buy up a bunch of calls and then drive it up higher, and then in post-market, all of that gets sold right back off and you end up right back in the same spot that they were before but a lot of their gamma and everything was taken away from them so there you have it clean and simple more of the same but it's getting exciting and again uh, i think the volatility only grows from here as uncertainty rises and not necessarily a bad thing it's just the way of it so we'll just follow what the readings are and go from there have a good one trade well anything relevant i'll put it on the skype chat